that's pretty amazing right there. Crikey, watch out. G'day and welcome back. Now Mother Nature can provide everything that a cyclist might need. And today we're on the hunt for cable snakes. Now, you can buy them pre-packaged online, but as with all my cycle gear, I like to get them fresh. So, come on, let's go. Right, now cable snakes, they're indigenous to bloody everywhere. So come on, let's see what we can find. Right, there's one up in this tree, come on. You can see him right there. Right, he's a big one, right, there you go. Grab him by the neck, right there. Grab him by the neck. Right, wind him up, wind him up, wind him up. Wind him in there. Get him in your backpack. Just pop him in there like that. Trade him. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Welcome back to the studio. So, first things first, you're gonna wanna grab the cable snakes you caught it earlier. And they're still alive. So you've got to throttle the life out of these little blighters. Takes a few seconds, but once they're done, once they're good and lifeless, you've got yourself some fresh UCI legal cable snakes. Simple as that, really. Right, next week we're going to be tracking down the elusive cask turtle. And once you've got a hold of him, you can turn him into a nice little cycle helmet. What a beauty. Oh, God! <laughs> Bloody cables, that's gotta go for my eyes. Not this time, you little bastard. G'day, and welcome back to another Bloody Bonza Trace Photo Production. My name is Luke. So recabling your bike is probably something many of us either put off entirely or maybe pay someone else to do it. But today, I'm gonna to show you how you can recable your entire bike super easy for mere pennies. 478 pennies, or 614 cents. So why bother, right? So maybe you can see that your cables are a little bit rusty, or maybe you can see some damage on the cable outers, or maybe your shifting isn't quite as crisp as it once was. Or maybe you're like me and you're trying to fill a void in your life with bike maintenance. But I mean, I have had these cables on my bike for about 13, 14 months. And I've noticed that the shifting on the rear cassette between the ninth and the tenth sprocket is getting a little bit mushy. And that's one of my pet peeves. I kind of have to have really crisp shifting all the way down the range um, on the rear cassette. So I'm gonna rip it all out and put in uh, some new ones. Anyway, let's get right into it. Right, so what are we gonna need to get this job done? So first up, you're gonna need to get yourself a cabling kit. So this is a Jaguar cabling kit that I picked up on eBay for £3.78p. But for some reason, these Jaguar kits only ever come with the brake cables. So you're also gonna to wanna to pick up a pair of gear cables. And I picked up these two for one pound on eBay. So your raw materials there are four pound 78p, which I think is pretty damn good. Next up, you're gonna want something to cut the cables with. So I've got some dedicated cable snips here, but you could probably get away with a good pair of pliers if you've got those. So if you're planning to reuse the bar tape, then good for you, but my bar tape is pretty manky and cut up. So I'm gonna be replacing that. And luckily I got some lizard skin bar tape for my birthday a few months back. And this is good quality stuff. So really excited to put that on. Now these two are technically optional, but I do recommend them. And that's a little bit of light oil. This is just light multi-purpose oil and some multi-purpose grease there. And finally, because I'm a fancy boy, I'm also gonna be putting these on. So these are kind of squidgy, squidgy bar tape gel pads. And that just adds a little bit of comfort. So you put them underneath the bar tape. I put them here um, on these raised areas. And that really helps with comfort, especially on long rides, but those are completely optional. Okay, right, so you can see the bar tape here is looking a bit ropey on this side, and this side it's peeling as well. So first step, let's get all this old bar tape off. This is bar removal time-lapse, bar tape removal time-lapse. 
So I've known a few people that reuse bar tape, but I never do. Bar tape is pretty cheap and you don't always have to get the super plush stuff. New bar tape can really smarten a bike up, plus it's a chance to change up the look and color scheme at the same time. Well worth a few extra quid if you ask me. Okay, cool, so the bar tape is all off, but now I've got to start pulling the cables out of the frame. Now, you may recall that when I got the frame originally, there were these white cable guide tubes sort of poking out of the frame. And as I pull the cables out, I'm gonna to need to replace these into the frame so that when I come to re-cable the bike with all my new fresh cables, these will be there to help uh, ease the cables back through and into the right place. So let's get cracking. Okay, cool, so you can see what I've done is I've removed the bolt which holds this rear derailleur cable in here, and you can see that that's the bit of tube which feeds the cable round from the frame to the derailleur. And what I've done is I've posted over the top of this tube, I've posted one of those cable alignment kind of white tubes here. And if I show you, it runs down through this chain stay tube here. And if you look underneath, you should be able to see, yeah, see that white thing moving there? That is the end of that tube. So when I pull the cable, um, out of here, the tube will stay in place to help me feed it back through the through the frame. And also I'll need to put another one of those white tubes um, up here through the down tube. So again, I can feed the cable back in and then back through to the rear derailleur. So let me get that done uh, right now. Okay, cool. So I've completely removed the rear derailleur cable from this bike now, and you can see I've got a tube hanging out of the frame here. And I've also got a tube hanging out of the frame here. And if I twist this tube, you should be able to see that that's the other end of it. And what you'll be able to see as well is that I've put a little bit of tape on either end of the tube. So I've got a bit of tape on there and I've got a little bit of tape on the end here. And this is because these tubes are basically your lifelines. They guide the new cables through and if these tubes fall out or you lose them or they don't stay in place, it will be a right pain to re-cable your bike. So I always put a little bit of tape on them. I'll stick it to the frame there, just to uh, keep them in place and so you don't lose them. So uh, it's exactly the same principle now for the front derailleur cable. So I'll remove this one in the same manner. So I'll take this out and just put the cables, sorry, put the tubes in place. And the same again for the rear brake, which runs along the back here and, and pops out. So I'll put another tube in there as well. So uh, let me get on with that right now. Okay, great, so all the cables are now removed from the frame. So you can see that's the rear derailleur cable, which I've just showed you. This is the front derailleur cable here. So if I give that a wiggle, you can see down there. Yep, so that's the front derailleur cable, and this is the rear brake cable. So I've been posting these tubes over the top of the cables as I've been removing them, so I can reroute the new ones. Anyway, next up, I need to remove these cable outers from this fantastic Carbon Aero Toseek handlebar here, of which I have a separate video up here, bing, so you might wanna check that one out. But anyway, before I just rip these cable outers out of this out of this handlebar, what I'll do is I'll post the original cables through these outers before I remove them. So that way, when I come to replace them with the fresh cable outers, I can use the cables that are sat in these quite tight corners here to help kind of wrangle the new cable outers through this bar because these angles are quite tight and the areas you have to get them through are quite small. So having the cables there to help pull the new cable outers through is gonna be a massive help. So let me get on with that right now. So in my previous review of the Toseek carbon bars I'm using here, I mentioned that they were a bit of a nightmare to cable as the angles internally are pretty sharp. So fitting the cable outers through them was a bit painstaking, but a commenter by the name of MazeCraze06 gave me the suggestion I'm demonstrating here using the cables themselves as a guide for the outers. Honestly, a cracking suggestion. And it must have saved me at least 30 minutes of faffing around. So big shout out to Maze Craze. And shows I do read the comments, even though some of the mean ones make me die inside. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So you can see I've removed the cable outers from this handlebar here and I've left the cables in place to make my life a lot easier uh, later on when I come to put the new cable outers through. But for now, the next job is to cut the new cable outers to length. And when you're re-cabling a bike like this, it's a super simple process because you literally match the length of your existing cable outers to the new ones, just cut them to the, to the same length. And you can see here, I've labeled them to make my life a little bit easier, just so I know what I'm doing. If you are cabling a bike fresh and you don't have existing cable outers to kind of match the length to, 
then it's a little bit more complicated, but I do actually cover that method um, in a previous video, which is here, bing, where I built a very similar bike to this for a friend of mine, and I obviously had to cut a new cable out as to length. So if you check in the video description for that video, you'll see a timestamp to where I show that method for doing that. But anyway, let me get these done uh, right now, and you should see them right about now. Cool. So once it goes in focus, there we go. You can see that I've cut the new black cable outers to the length of the existing green ones. I chose black because it's going to look super stealthy. And I'm going to use these uh, cable outers now and feed them back through this internally rooted handlebar here using these cables. So let's get cracking. Hold up. Okay, one quick tip before I jump into the cabling. And you can see here, this is a freshly cut cable outer. And you should be able to see the hole it's not particularly obvious where the cable goes. And that's because there's a little plastic insert which has kind of folded over itself. So if I show you one that I've slightly modified, you can see the hole in this one is a lot bigger and more, more open. So that's gonna really help you route those cables through. So the way that you can do that, is if you get a pair of needle nose pliers and just pop it in the end there, wiggle it around, that's gonna open that hole up and that's gonna really assist you when you come to route these cables through these cable outers. So uh, make sure you do that step before you install the cable outers on your bike. Okay, so when fitting the cable outers, there are a few quick things to note. The first is that the brake and gear cable outers are constructed differently, meaning the brake cable outers are around five millimeters wide, whereas the outers for the gears are around four millimeters. In addition, new cable outers fresh out the box, or the bag in this case, can have rusty ends to them, as the cores are usually made of steel. So you're gonna to wanna to snip those off before you size your outers and install them. Okay, cool, so that is done already and Big shout out to Crazy Maze 6 who gave me the suggestion of using these cables as cable outer guides because that made the job so much easier. So you've got the brake cable outer here and the gear cable outer and they pop out of their respective places in the bottom here. Same for the other side. Next up though, I need to seat these cable outers into their proper places in the shifter. So you can see here, this brake one goes in this hole here and this gear cable outer goes in there. So, but before I do that, I'll put a little bit of grease on the ends here because the ends of them are just raw steel so if you put a bit of grease in before you insert them into the holes um, that will uh, stop rust and maintain a bit of longevity with these cables so top tip for you there anyway let's get going a few moments later okay cool so we've got both cable outers fitted into the back of the shifter here and this brake cable outer actually fits about this far into the back of the shifter so what you'll need to do when you're fitting it is grab the end of it here and push it into the handlebar so it builds up some slack and then pull it into the back. And you'll need to do that about three or four times. Just push it in, build up some slack in the bar, and then pull it back into the shifter. And then it will seat properly in the back. It's roughly the same for the gear cable outer here, and it looks like a really funny angle, but it's actually absolutely fine once you get it in, and it shifts flawlessly. Um, so I've done the same on this side, but I've just wrapped it in a little bit of electrical tape to anchor it. So I'll do the same for that side, and then we'll get on to actually fitting the cables through the frame. Okay, cool. So in the same way as the outers, the cables for brakes and gears are different. Brake cables are a bit thicker than gear cables, and I'll throw up a quick picture to demonstrate. But this is basically down to the fact that even for an incredibly weak specimen, such as myself, you tend to put a lot more force through the brake cables than through the gears. And one more quick tip, which you can see me do here, is putting a little multi-purpose oil onto the cables as I feed them into the outers. This A, reduces friction between the outers and the cables, and B, reduces corrosion issues in the long run. But make sure you avoid applying anything too thick directly onto the cables, like grease, for example, as that might actually end up hindering your shifting or braking performance. Right, so all the cables are now through the cable outers here, and the next step is just to cable it, really. So first things first, what you wanna do is you wanna get your ferrules, which came in the cabling kit, and you wanna stick them on the end. So on the end of this brake cable here, I've put a ferrule, and I've put a little bit of grease. I'm not sure if you can see that. But I put some grease in there, again, just to prevent rust. Next, you wanna start running the cables back through these white tubes. So you can see here, I've put it inside this white tube here, posted it through, and it's popped out the other end. So all I need to do now is pull this cable through, get rid of this tube. So pull the tube out and voila so tubes here discard that and we've got a cable which is a uh, run run through the top tube here so next you've just got to fit the well in this case for the rear brake just got to fit this other uh, cable outer here 
bolt it all up, and that's essentially your re-cable. So the principle is exactly the same for everywhere else on the bike. You just use the white cable tubes to help guide the cable out as through the frame and then pull them out when you're done, really. So yeah, that's it. And I'm just gonna carry on and cable the rest of the bike. Right, so as I mentioned, just follow exactly the same steps for the rest of the cables. But do remember to put a little dab of grease on the end of each cable outer to coat the bare steel and prevent it from rusting later on down the line. And then pop the appropriate ferrule over the top to seal in that greasy goodness. Once you have done that, post the cables into their rightful places in the frame using the white guide tubes. Now this step can be a bit fiddly and time consuming, especially for the rear derailleur cable, but take it slow and make sure the tubes don't fall out of the frame when you're fitting the cables through them or get removed prematurely, because trust me, it can be super frustrating when you get it wrong. But once all the cables are in place, pull the tubes out and it is pretty much finished. Only a few bits left, just tighten up the bolts on the brakes and derailleurs, snip off the excess cable lengths, and then fit the little aluminium cable end caps to keep the cables nice and tidy and prevent them from fraying. The only thing left is wrapping your bar tape, which I won't actually go into here because basically I'm no expert on this and there are a million other tutorials on how to do it properly. So you should probably go and watch one of those really. Okay, cool, so we are done. And I'm really, really pleased with how it's come out. I think it looks amazing. And I've taken it out on a few rides now and the shifting is so smooth. I always forget how crisp the, the bike feels once it's been freshly cabled. The, the shifting is just so precise. It basically feels like a new bike. So that's pretty awesome. And this bar tape, this lizard skin stuff, is a little bit more pricey than your standard bar tape, but it goes on really nicely and it feels super grippy as well. So super pleased with that too. Now I'm sure not everyone will agree with the color scheme I've chosen. So I've gone black cables on a black frame with neon on the bars, but it matches my shoes. So that's pretty cool. Right, anyway, that's it. So subscribe if you uh, like stuff like this, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you've got any questions or comments about this particular cabling job or cabling your bike in general, throw them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to as many of you as I can. Anyway, that is all for now. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Also, if you wanna see some super sexy bike pics of the same bike, in different places because this is my only bicycle then go and check out my instagram link in the description see ya